In this presentation, we're going to talk about Ceramco layering porcelain for porcelain fused to metal restoration. Um, so, like we talked before, the first application of the porcelain is the um, opaque porcelain application. Um, and for this type of porcelain, they have the uh, manufacturer recommends to apply a one coat technique. So the, the opaque, uh, it's a little bit thicker and uh, it can be applied to cover all the surfaces. And we have to make sure also that when we do the um, build up of the porcelain, uh, the opaque porcelain, uh, we vibrate it and take out that moisture of, from, from the porcelain before we bake it. Also, we can sprinkle some of the crystals on, on the surface that will um, add with the bond, uh, bonding between the opaque porcelain and the dentin porcelain. Once we apply the opaque porcelain, we're ready to fire it. After we fire it using the manufacturer instructions for baking the porcelain, the surface of uh, the baked porcelain should be um, uniform in texture, but also should have a little bit of um, a sheen, not very uh, shiny. If it's very shiny, that means we use uh, program that was too high, the temperature was too high for baking. The two cut techniques is the technique where we first apply a wash of the opaque porcelain just to kind of condition the metal to receive the porcelain. And then on the second layer, we apply a thicker um, Based of the opaque porcelain and again then we're going to apply the crystal and uh, the crystals and then um, bake it at the recommended temperatures. Um, how we can use different uh, opaque modifiers? So um, this is exactly what we were talking about in the last lectures where we mix the uh, opaque with some of the stains to get the desired uh, shade. And we can see in this case that um, uh, a little darker brownish uh, stain was uh, applied to um, the gingival portion of the coping. Um, and again, after the application of the stain, we apply those crystals and fire the um, baking the porcelain. And we can see after the bake that actually the coping now <clears throat> has this uh, nice um, shade that it goes from a little bit darker towards the gingival towards more lighter towards the incisor. Um, in some cases, for aesthetic purposes, especially for anterior cases, if we have to do a porcelain fused to metal crowns for anterior cases, we want to make sure that the aesthetics are high. So um, in those cases, it's indicated to cut back the coping and have the and build up the margin in porcelain that gives a more natural aesthetic looking towards you know, the final restoration. So when we apply the uh, opaque, first we apply the opaque to cover the metal, like we presented before, either we can do one coat or two coats, we fire it and now every, um, every part of the surface of the coping, it's covered and uh, by the opaque, the metal doesn't show, okay? 
And now we have another type of porcelain that's called the shoulder porcelain. And this porcelain also um, comes in different shades. So again, we have to match with the, the uh, overall shade that we need to do the crown or uh, the restoration. So the application of the porcelain, the shoulder porcelain, it's very simple. We apply it. We put a little bit of uh, separating liquid uh, on the margin of the dye. And then we mix the powder shoulder porcelain with a buildup liquid. And using a brush, take small increments of the porcelain and apply it directly on the dye. And then we can use also the um, condensations method to take out the moisture from, um, from the porcelain. Now, just to make sure we understand this, when we're talking about baking porcelain and in general uh, precondition and finishing porcelain, there is a sequence in the baking procedures. So for degassing or decontaminating the metal, right? When we're talking about decontamination of the coping to receive porcelain. When this program, the baking program, it's the highest temperature that we're gonna use through the whole process. The second highest temperature will be the opaque um, baking porcelain, okay? Then the third, will be the shoulder porcelain, all right? So there is a, a sequence in the way the baking programs and the baking, the baking temperatures take place. We cannot have, for instance, the dentin porcelain baking at a higher temperature than the opaque porcelain because that will melt the porcelain, the, bake, the opaque porcelain. So everything has to be a lower temperature, a um, few degrees lower for the baking. And that comes uh, already set up in the recipe of the porcelain, all right? Another important aspect is that when we bake the porcelain, the porcelain usually shrinks. So we might need to do a second application uh, of porcelain to achieve the shape that we wanted. And this is what this slides presents. So we, uh, we uh, added the first time that shoulder porcelain, we cover all the way to the margin, we fire it, we bake it, but during the baking process, the porcelain shrank a little bit. So we need to add a little more shoulder porcelain. So we're gonna do the same procedure, apply a separating agent on the dye, use the shoulder porcelain to build up, and then fire it, okay? So once we have this uh, coping um, done, and we have the opaque porcelain applied and the shoulder uh, porcelain applied also, we are ready to move on to build up uh, the the shape of the tooth. So now we're going to use what's called the buildup of the layering, the dentin porcelain, to do most of the shape of the porcelain. And <clears throat> the dentin porcelain, um, it's a little more opacious than the incisor porcelain. Also, it's matching the shade that we used previously for the opaque and the uh, shoulder porcelain and also has to match the final shade of the restoration. So when we apply the porcelain um, for the dentin porcelain, we build up to the full contour. It's exactly like we do a full wax contour. And we can use a brush to, to do the build up. Uh, <clears throat> usually the um, 
dentin and the incisal porcelain comes in the form of powder that we have to mix with the build up liquid right so we build up the crown we can use like i said a brush to do the build up or we can use a spatula also uh, using a spatula uh, we can um, cut back some of the porcelain to add different um, characterizations like the mamelons or other characterizations that might be necessary to copy of the natural tooth, okay? Um, again, we have to make sure that when we do the buildup with the dentin, right? The dentin will do it full, full size, right? Full contour buildup. Why? Because when we're going to bake the porcelain, the porcelain is going to shrink. So that's going to allow us to add the incisal porcelain and kind of uh, look organic. So this is a cutback. Um, if we need to build up those um, mamelons or even Sometimes it's good to um, cut back a little bit of the dentin porcelain for the application of the incisal, because if we look at the surface of uh, our incisal teeth, we can see that actually the um, opaque of the teeth. In some, some uh, areas, our teeth are a little more translucent. Some of them are in other areas are more opaque. So it creates that natural flow of um, how the, the tooth look. And this is the application of the enamel porcelain. Um, again, when we bake <coughs> the dentin and the enamel porcelain, we have to make sure that follow that um, transition, right? So we had first the highest was the degassing program, highest temperature, then the opaque, was the second. Then the shoulder porcelain, if oh, we use shoulder porcelain, was the third. Dentin was the fourth. Now the incisal is the fifth, right? So the temperatures goes down every time we bake a different type of porcelain. Every time, again, when we're ready, before we're ready to put the porcelain into the oven to bake, we have to use one of the condensations method to draw out the moisture from uh, from the porcelain. Uh, when applying the enamel, always overbuild a little bit because like we said before, it's um, the porcelain shrinks during the baking procedure. Um, very important also when we apply the incisal porcelain to use a dry brush and kind of blend it in. So yes, indeed, if you look at the natural tooth, you can see that the incisal edge of especially the anterior teeth, they are more um, translucent. But if we want to copy the nature, right, we have to put this incisal to kind of blend in. It's not like I'm going to draw a line in the first third of the incisal edge, I'll put the incisal, then I'll draw a line and do the uh, dentin. So everything has to be blended in. That's why it's important to use this dry brush to kind of blend in the incisal with the dentin if we do it in the same build-up uh, procedure. So once the first bake it's done, we can see that um, the baked porcelain has a little bit of a glaze. That's the natural uh, way of the porcelain to have a little bit of a shine after baking. And this is where we can um, start looking at the texture, if we need to apply any texture, and also uh, at the color, if we match the, the shade. Um, for advanced uh, buildup, <clears throat> Um, these are for cases that are um, we have to copy a very detailed um, 
natural dentition. Some, uh, there is no crown that has a straight or natural tooth that has a straight color. It's always a combination of different shades and different uh, characterizations that we have to copy. And this is where this technique comes with the advanced buildup. Um, so for instance, um, we can use a high chroma towards the gingival of the um, coping to um, create, to use that, uh, it's called an opacious dentin. Um, and that's important because this uh, porcelain, it's more opaque. So meaning that um, it covers better if there is any area that um, the color of the porcelain doesn't come out like we want the natural color of the tooth, we can apply this opacient dentin to correct that. All right. Also, we can use the uh, dentin build up uh, with the cut back for the mammalons. And again, the manufacturer of the porcelain provides for us all these type of additional porcelains like the opacient dentin or the mammalon porcelain that we can use and apply to um, copy what the patient has. Um, again, every time we're using a material, uh, a new porcelain, we have to look at the manufacturing instructions for um, the baking temperatures or programs, okay? Uh, what about if we have to add <clears throat> a different um, other porcelains to create that um, translucency, right? So we can add porcelains that are more translucent. Um, <clears throat> so again, where we apply that? We apply everywhere? No, there are certain spots on the crown that we need to apply those and we have to make sure that we don't put it all over the place. We, we have to make sure that we know exactly where that goes and keep in mind that every time we bake the porcelain, the porcelain shrinks, okay? So this is the difference between a generic buildup, a basic buildup and an advanced buildup where we're using different type of porcelain to create those characterizations that the patient may have. All right. <clears throat> so these are some of the indications where we can use opacious dentin. So we can use on the facial area, towards the gingiva, towards the lingual, or on the bottom of the pontex. Um, and this is how we can see, for instance, how we can develop different shades and also include those characterizations that they look natural. If we look at the picture from the left, we can see that we have a very well distinguished, clearly seeing the mammalons, right? And also we can see the clear or the translucency of the incisal edge. Uh, the, Picture in the middle, we can see that the <clears throat> um, enamel, it's a little more, uh, has this opal kind of effect, right? So it's not translucent, but it gives that light translucency or transparency um, aspect also a high chroma of the dentin. So we can see that actually in the middle of the tooth and towards the gingiva, the shade, it's a little bit darker, right? And also we have bleach shades with a uh, standard enamel um, porcelain. Uh, so different characterizations, different shapes, again, uh, crack lines are used for persons, you know, all the people that might have those crack lines. So uh, those are used towards um, 
the end, after we finish building up on the incisor, we can use the stains to uh, put those characterizations. The same also we can use for the occlusal surfaces of the uh, posterior teeth to um, indicate the pit and, and fissures also uh, where the occlusal uh, table is. So usually on the occlusal surface, um, some patients may have a little darker um, shade on the occlusal surface. So we can use those stains to um, copy what the patient has. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about felspatic um, veneers. And this is a method that it's, um, it was used to uh, give high aesthetic restorations and also the fit was perfect. So um, we saw earlier using um, foil matrix to use a, to um, help us to build up the porcelain for fabricating the veneers phosphatic veneers. Another method is to use the um, refractory model. And uh, refractory um, material, it's more like a, a stone material, but it's, um, it's kind of like a um, combination between a stone and uh, an investment material. It looks like a stone, but it can put, uh, be put in the oven and baked and not break. Okay, so that's the idea. We fabricate this um, refractory model and then we can use the porcelain directly to build up directly on the model, put this model in the bake oven, bake it, and then uh, we can um, clean up the stone and we left only with the veneer. So this, like I said, it's a very um, safe method and very accurate. The fit of the uh, laminate, it's perfect when using this refractory method. <laughs> also, another method is to use the pressing. Method. So when we use the pressing, we have our model done in die stone. We can do a wax up, a full contour wax up, sprue it, invest it, um, and then pressed. Then after we pressed, just uh, retrieve the divested and retrieve the veneers from the ring, uh, cut up the sprue, uh, refinish it, re um, you know, adjust the contours or uh, contact if necessary, and we're ready to move to the next step, which will be to apply a stain and then um, glaze. So this is how the veneer should look once it's completed. They're very thin, and also uh, we can apply different characterizations to make them uh, look natural. Um, so for uh, the margin porcelains, like we saw in the beginning when we were talking about applying um, shoulder porcelain, we have to make sure that the we have enough uh, room for applying the shoulder porcelain and um, we fire it at the proper temperature, okay? When we have porcelain fused to metal, how are we gonna do the margins? So again, we can cover the margins with the porcelain. Um, this type of um, a restoration, it shows us a shoulder or a chamfer margin. 
Okay, so we see actually, if we look at the finished crown, we can see that actually there is metal underneath. So this is um, a very good way to mask the metal. Now, why somebody we want, want to put a metal and then porcelain on top to create this crown? Because in general, metal, it's a stronger material and um, it lasts longer in the patient's mouth. Okay. So um, <clears throat> if we start doing the pressing, uh, we can do a coping and then we can do a build up with uh, the ceramic or ceramic uh, material, the press material, or we can do a full contour and then stain and glaze. So this is what we see here. We did a full contour um, pressed Emacs, let's say, and then um, stain and glazed. The difference between um, build-up porcelain for ceramics versus build-up porcelain or for spatic porcelain for PFM is that the um, spatic porcelain, when it's baked, it comes out a uh, kind of glazed already, shiny already. For the um, all ceramic, sometimes the porcelain doesn't come out too shiny. So we might need to add um, uh, a glaze, a second glaze. Okay. So again, we can apply the same procedures of staining and glazing. The same procedure applies when we do uh, also um, a combination of metal coping, but instead of using build-up porcelain, we're going to use pressed porcelain. So we're going to uh, fabricate the coping, then uh, we're going to use uh, opaque porcelain to cover the coping and then uh, we're going to do a full wax up. Um, once we have the uh, full contour wax up, we're going to sprue it, invest it and press it. And once we uh, have it pressed, we divest, cut the sprue, um, reshape it, add porcelain if necessary and then stain and glaze. So we have different um, tools at our disposal to fabricate different type of restoration. We have a spatic porcelain to add to porcelain fused to metal. Also to metal, we have this pressable material that we can do a full contour wax up and then add, um, press it over the metal um the same it can be done for uh, zirconia okay so <clears throat> different type of uh, restoration using pressable material or ceramic material where we do a full contour wax up we press it and then we um, finish it stain and glazed and it's ready to go it's a very good um, type of restoration and it, it gives a good uh, result okay um, also we when we do this type of work uh, we can always customize it so let's say we have a case and the patient has a lot of uh, characterization in their teeth and we want to achieve high aesthetics. So we have to do these two centrals. What we do, we uh, do the full contour uh, wax up, we sprue it, invest it, we press it, and then now we cut it from the sprues uh, we pre-treat the surface of the ceramic and then we can do a cutback to apply different um, build-up porcelain to create those uh, characterizations that we see in the patient's natural dentition. 
So again, we can use a clear porcelain to create more um, of that translucency. We can add uh, enamel and the mammalons. And if we look at the finished crown, you can see actually the translucency and the mammalons and the characterization put in those crowns. Um, so here are the matching um, shades for each type of porcelain from, you know, um, the shades from uh, enamel porcelain to, uh, for PFM to uh, ceramics and also um, composite. Okay, so those are the charts. Um, Oh, like we talked a little bit earlier, um, we can use also ceramic or layering porcelain for porcelain fused to zirconia. Zirconia is another type of um, ceramic material, just like the pressable material, like uh, lithium desilicate. Okay, so the idea is the same. We can use the coping. So we design um, the coping, uh, we have the coping prefabricated, and then uh, the only thing with the zirconia, um, now it comes in different colors, but before when zirconia first appeared on the market, zirconia was very, very uh, bright, very white. So. Uh, we had to use a stain on the coping to give the general shade for the crown. Okay, so this is what it shows here. And <clears throat> once we have the coping done and the shading, if necessary, is done, then we can uh, start doing the build up like we do with the porcelain fused to metal, using first the dentin. Uh, porcelain and then the incisor porcelain and any modifiers that we might need to have to uh, capture the characterization of the uh, patient's uh, natural dentition. Um, just we want to make sure when we do this type of restoration, make sure that we're using the right porcelain for the substructure that we're using and also the right program, baking program, okay? The programs are not interchangeable. So if I do <clears throat> build up on um, zirconia coping, it's not the same program as I do a build up uh, for the uh, metal coping. So we have to be careful about this. All right, so these are some of the porcelains that uh, we can apply uh, to create that characterizations of the uh, natural dentition. And again, each type of porcelain, we have to make sure we uh, following the manufacturer instructions in terms of application and the program used. Okay. Um, also, we have to keep in mind that any build-up porcelain shrinks when it's baked. So we can add a little bit of porcelain over, extend the shape of the build-up porcelain because it's going to shrink a little bit when we bake it, OK? So these are different type of applications, OK? Uh, what we can do, even let's say sometimes we did a crown and it doesn't look, um, it doesn't match some of the characteristics that the patient has. What we can do is to grind down the area where we see that we can add the characterization and use different type, uh, different uh, porcelains or, um, you know, shading, uh, staining that can actually uh, match the natural dentition of the patient, okay? Again, the same when we do the application of the porcelain. So each type of porcelain 
that we use in they come in this uh, large array of uh, materials from uh, margin or shoulder porcelain all the way to stain and glaze okay so we talk about application for the margins to be uh, for more uh, apply for more uh, aesthetic areas in the zones where it's more aesthetic how are we going to cut back the porcelain and build up to create those mama loans or different um, characterizations for uh, cusps some people they have a very dark um, occlusal surface so we can add characterization we can add stains or glains or even porcelain build up porcelain that it's a little bit darker to create that um, characterization match up okay so we can see here how we can can create uh, using those porcelain how we can create something that it's really customized to match exactly what the patient has All right um the pole effects meaning that the um, mammalon por porcelain it's a little more um transparent so it creates that illusion where we see the mammalons more intensify into the crown okay so we can see also um, when we add um, glaze, also with the glaze, we have to be very careful. If we make phosphatic porcelain, the phosphatic porcelain, the one that we use for porcelain fused to metal, when we bake it, it kind of comes uh, a little bit shiny. So it's called a natural glaze of the porcelain due to the baking temperature. In those cases, you know, <laughs> we have to be careful when we apply a glaze, we don't want to make the tooth too shiny. And why is that important? Because if we look at our natural teeth, right, what makes our teeth uh, shiny is the saliva, all right? So if we make a tooth that it's overglazed, and then the doctor inserts that in the patient's mouth, adding that saliva, it's going to intensify that shininess, all right? So sometimes it's better to leave it a little bit um, dull, not so shiny, because the saliva adds um, that shininess, that natural glaze, so to speak, okay? So... <clears throat> Uh, please review uh, this chart at uh, your convenience, study it. Uh, it's very important because in general, the same steps that you see in this uh, chart kind of applies to other system. This is for Ceramco system, but um, kind of the same idea apply in general for different systems. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please ask during the lecture. Thank you.